Yeah, it feels like forever ago that we were here. Um, it's like the world has changed, and I think it probably has, you know. And uh, we're still where we not where you know we're still not where we need to be. Um, but you know, it's a different time. But we have good memories here. Last time, you know, we got to play well again. But it feels like forever ago when that happened. Um, obviously, you know, I'd love to duplicate our energy and our effort last time we were here. So, uh, great test from a very good Miami team again tonight. Let's go to Tim Reynolds. Hey, Coach. Good to see you again. Um, Sam kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but I was curious how much you think about that night. And if I remember right, you know, your post-game press conference was in that weird location back of the building, and and you 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 seemed to know right away that the world was changing that night. I guess how do you do you remember like how you found out if you got word on the bench during the game? That that the league was suspending and and I'm just I just don't know how many how, how often you go back to thinking about how everything kind of changed that night. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, yeah, I think back to that night a lot. You know, I, I did not get word till I got into the locker room that night. You know, we finished the game and there was some there was, I could feel something going on. There was a lot of chatter going on. Obviously, we were in a tight game, so. You know, um, nobody was giving me that information, but as soon as we got back to the locker room, you know, um, the players, people were on their phones saying the league was suspended. And obviously at that point we knew uh, things had turned and turned quickly and there was going to be change. What I didn't know at the time, like you and a lot of us, we just didn't know how long this thing was going to, you know, was this going to be one week, two week suspension? Obviously it's continued to, to change our world and, uh, our life in the NBA as professionals, and it, it continues to. But um, yeah, in some ways, it feels like forever ago. And then I walked in this building; it feels like yesterday. I walked by that podium that you, you talked about, and you know, flash back to to that evening. So uh, things have never been the same since. I hopefully we're back there soon. Um, but I think this arena, you know, I'll always have that memory here in this this building every time I walk in here. Thanks, James. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you. Let's go to Rick Bennell and then Will Kunkel. JB, um, what do you know about um, um, Terry's situation at this point? Yeah, he's still questionable. I'll get final word here in a few minutes. Uh, he's working with Joe right now. So as soon as I'm done here, I'll go back and check and see where we're at. Do you know what you would do in the event if he doesn't play? Uh, likely start this, the same way we started the second half with uh, LaMelo and Tay in the backcourt. Thanks. Rick Stowell, he's so good. He stole my question. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Richard Walker and then Rod Boone. Chris Prego, uh, Richard Walker, uh, same kind of question. Uh, if Terry is able to play, would you limit him at all, or are you still waiting to get the information on that? I'm sorry, would we limit him? Yeah, if he is able to play. Well, I want Terry to be 100%. You know, I in. Uh, this is a long season. We're going to be very cautious with him, make sure he's okay. If he's good to go tonight, you know, he, that means he's 100% and, you know, we'll play him as normal rotation. Obviously, if he's not, I'll take, you know, make sure we're, we're cautious and we don't, uh, we err on more on the cautious end. So um, I should know something here in the next few minutes. It's been a Rod Boone and then Eric Reed. JB, you mentioned the uh, second half, I was just starting, you know, Tay and LaMelo, you would go that way if Terry can't play tonight. What would you like about the combination of Tay and LaMelo in the backcourt um, second half of the game on Saturday? Yeah, as you know, Rod, I mean, we played that lineup. It wasn't just the second half. You know, we've done that all year. They played together for a number of minutes. So it's not like this is something new. You know, all the guards have played together. They're all comfortable with each other. Uh, I like that as the you know, start of the second you know, the start of the second half was very good. You know, we just got out, we played with great pace. Those two uh, high-level playmakers, you know, Tay is so undervalued. You know, I think a lot of other people get attention at times. But Devontae, when you look at his numbers last year, this year, every time he's on the court, something good happens. And I think people in general take him for granted. Uh, I try not to as his coach. He's a valuable piece of our program. Um, so I feel very comfortable with him out there. Uh, obviously, having both of them out there, it's it's you know it's a luxury for me. You know, one on each side of the floor to make plays, shoot the ball. Um, heady point guards, they see the game, they see the, the play before the play. So um, they really set the table for us. Those two guys, they play with great pace, 
And if I'm their teammates, I want to play with both those guys. Let's go to Eric Reed. Hey, Coach Borrego, always good to see you. Uh, just curious about your, your, your impressions of your 19-year-old rookie, uh, LaMelo Ball, who may get his first NBA start tonight. Tell, tell us a little bit about him, what, what, what yeah, your impressions have been. He's a great kid, first of all. You know, we, I didn't know much about him when we got him. Um, obviously, I went to L.A. to see him, heard a lot, you know, through the, through the reports, the media, obviously getting that information from our, you know, Mitch and, and the scouting group. We liked him. Um, but he's a wonderful kid, great person, uh, genuine, humble, hungry, coachable, joyful, all those things as a coach that I love and I want to be around. Uh, he's really ignited our program. He, bring, he brings a great joy and spirit every day in practice and shoot around in games. And the biggest thing is teammates love him and they love playing with him. Um, you know, he, he's very, he's infectious. His spirit is infectious. His game is infectious. We're first in the league in assist percentage and assist, and uh, he's a big part of that. Obviously, that started with our program last year. We laid a foundation for that, but he's continued that. And, um, you know, he's fearless more than anything. He's fearless, he's confident, and he plays with a, a wonderful joy. So, Eric, he's good. He's good. I love being around him. I love coaching him. Good luck, Coach. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you. Same. Let's go to Nick Carboni. JB, I know you've mentioned this year that you would like LaMelo to start at some point this year. Um, you know, just kind of a matter of when. What do you think his ready, readiness level is at this point? Obviously not knowing what you're going to get in a few minutes with Terry, but uh, in terms of his readiness to start for this team. Well, I think he's, you know, he's obviously had an impact on our team. And he's played against starters. He played against bench guys. You know, this isn't anything that's new to him. It's not anything he hasn't seen. Um, you know, it's just the right time for whatever reason, circumstance uh, tonight. You know, if Terry can't go, we'll, we'll start Lamella. But uh, nothing changes for him. Like he, he's he's been here before. He's been in this position before. He's played against these same guys. He's played against starters this year. He's played against bench guys. You know, I think Drew Holiday was guarding him last game. This isn't. He's not going to be surprised. You know, playing against starters. Um, so I expect him to play the same way, same spirit, same energy. And that's Lamelo. You know, I don't think I don't think you know starting him. He's going to be uh, afraid of the moment or shy away from the moment. I mean, this kid is you know he's been do doing this his, his entire life. So um, you know, we'll just see how this plays out. We'll see what happens tonight. What happens moving forward, we'll figure it out. But for tonight, this could be our rotation. Let's uh, wrap up with the last question for Danny Thompson. Coach Danny Thompson with a three point conversion. You've always been you've always been a study of game film, and you always go back and evaluate the film. And we've seen the growth of Lamelo uh, so far this season. Could you say Saturday night might have been his best overall game after you sat back and watched the film since you've had him? I'd say yes. I mean, in general, yes. He's had he's had some big moments. I, I think his impact there in the fourth quarter was tremendous. You know, he, he made the plays to close that game out on both ends of the floor. So he's done it on the offensive end. I think last game, you know, overall, he had his, his imprint, especially on the defensive end, the big steals, the rebound, um, the ability to, to put pressure on the rim, the and one. I think overall, probably his most complete game is the way I describe it because of the impact on the defensive end as well. Obviously, he's got to, you know, continue to grow in that area on the defensive end. Uh, but he had major impact on both sides of the ball last game, and especially in the fourth quarter when it's winning time, you know, and he was a part of that group that held, you know, Milwaukee to three points in the last seven minutes of the game. Uh, he was on the floor defending. Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, I thought he, you know, played extremely well. Obviously we want growth and we want consistency. And tonight's that great challenge to, uh, to show that. Cool. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, guys. We'll see you post-game. Thank you.